Hey, what's up? It's Matt here. And today I want to talk to you about some of the biggest excuses I hear from prospective affiliate marketers, from people who say, you know, I've heard about this affiliate marketing thing, but it's not for me. And, and then they go on to say, and here's why it's not for me. These are these excuses for not getting started with affiliate marketing. Excuses for, for why people are giving up on affiliate marketing. You know, maybe they try it. They try it and then you know, here's what they discover. It's not working for me. But they give up before they really even get going. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy Podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Now let's get started. Today, like I said, we're going to talk about the five most common excuses and why they shouldn't hold you back. Here's the thing about all of these excuses. They all start with the phrase, but I. In other words, they think that they're special. They think that somehow they're unique and that these problems only apply to them. Well, I hate to break it to you. I'm not trying to be rude when I say this, but you're not that unique. You're not a special snowflake. And these things that are holding you back, they're not actually true. There are hundreds of, or even thousands of people trying to do the same thing as you. And, and many of them, quite frankly, are wildly successful. Here's the thing. They have the same challenges. They have the same doubts. They have the same questions. But they find a way around those challenges. They overcome those doubts. And they get answers to their questions. In other words, they take action in spite of their obstacles. They don't let their butts, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I tried to say that with a straight face. They don't like their butts, these butts that we're going to talk about, the butt eyes. They don't like their, let their butts drag them down. So here are those five excuses. Number one, but I don't know how to sell. This is the most common objection to promoting affiliate offers, but I don't know how to sell. Here's the thing though. We all know how to sell. We've been doing it since we were babies. You don't think you knew how to sell? You don't think you knew how to convince your parents to get what you want? You did. You know, Zig Ziglar puts it this way. He says that selling is essentially a transfer of feelings. Selling is essentially a transfer of feelings. That's it. That's all selling is. You know, there's this exercise you may have heard me talk about before. I like to take people through when they say they can't sell. They can't sell. Specifically, they can't sell affiliate offers because affiliate offers are not their own product. Like they say, you know, I can sell my own product, but I, I can't sell this somebody else's product. So I say, okay, you know, and I do this. I love doing this when it's like in a live event. Come up on stage. Okay, hear him sit down. I don't pat him on the head like that, but you know. Sit down. Tell me about your favorite restaurant. Just tell me about your favorite restaurant. And I have to say, okay, tell me what it feels like leading up to going. You know, what, like, do you make reservations? Is it like, is there a line? You know, I uh, think of like the Pancake House in uh, uh, Nashville. There's a line around the corner. I think of another place you call and you have to book it three weeks in advance. And it's something you, you look forward to. Okay, tell me about that. Tell me about the, the exterior. What's the neighborhood like? Tell me about the interior. D describe the atmosphere, the food, the service. Here's the thing. They use vivid language. They get excited to talk about their favorite place to eat. And after a few minutes, everyone in the room wants the same thing. Like, note to self, don't do this exercise right before lunch. You will lose the audience. But they get excited. They want to eat at that restaurant. They want to eat at that restaurant. They're passionate about what they're selling. So if you if you think you can't sell, just sit down and describe your favorite restaurant to somebody. You can sell. You can. You can sell. You already do it every day. All right, so that's one excuse that just simply does not hold water. The second excuse is, but I don't know my avatar. Now, I don't know why, but this is the second most common excuse I hear for not promoting affiliate offers. They don't know their avatar, so they don't know what to promote. And it's kind of like a chicken or the egg type thing. I don't know my avatar, so I don't know what to promote. I don't 
promote anything, so I don't learn what my audience is willing to buy. Affiliate marketing helps you determine your avatar. It, you promote different offers. You see what resonates over time. You learn what something somebody is willing to actually pay for. You learn something about your audience. See, it's different what they say they like, what they're, maybe you ask them in a survey and what they'll actually pay money for. And if you're running an online business, you've heard me say this, online businesses make money. Therefore, online businesses need to sell a product that people will actually buy, not just have great content. So that said, affiliate offers are going to tell you a lot about your avatar, but here's an exercise I'll take you through that can help you uh, create your avatar. In module two of my No Product, No Problem course, I, I go super in depth, but here's a short version. First, you want to give him a name. Now, when I use the masculine pronoun, I'm doing that because in my mind right now, I'm thinking about my avatar who is male. That doesn't mean if you're female, you're not in my avatar. It's just that my specific avatar for purposes, this is male. His name is Pete. Now, I'm going to, you know, just, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> you know, might be male or female, might have to. My avatar's name is Pete. His name is always in all caps to remind me that everything I do is for him, not me. The second thing I want you to do is ask, what are his values? You want to spend a considerable amount of time thinking about this. Next, ask, what are his goals? Where does he want to be in 90 days? Where does he want to be in a year? Where does he want to be in 10 years? In other words, what does he aspire to be, do, and have? What does he aspire to? Next, consider, what are his information sources? Where does he learn as it relates to your topics? What podcasts does he listen to? What blogs does he read? What magazines does he subscribe to? Then I want you to explore his challenges and pain points. Think about this. What's keeping him up at night? What keeps him from taking action? Like these five butts. These are Pete's challenges and pain points. These five butts right here. What causes him stress? What causes him worry? What causes him frustration? And then you want to fill out the demographic information. This could be anything you want to list about him. Is he married? Is he single? Divorced or widowed? Working full-time or part-time? Did he go to college? What's his income? Now, as I mentioned, my avatar is named Pete. And here's an outline of Pete. Pete values time and financial freedom. He prioritizes both family and hard work. He wants to balance both and he values serving his audience over financial gain. I'm reading this directly from my avatar script. Pete's goals, number one, reduce his workload to a manageable level in five years. Number two, be financially independent in 10 years. Number three, be known as an expert in his field. What, is, uh, what, is Pete's in, what are Pete's info sources? He listens to Smart Passive Income, The Ray Edwards Show, and Marketing in Your Car which I need to update this because now Marketing Secrets with Russell Brunson. He follows Michael Hyatt, Gary Vaynerchuk, and he reads Inc. and Fast Company. What are his pain points? Pete struggles to find time to put into his online business. He does not know where to start with affiliate marketing, and he feels it might be too late for him to build a successful business. The last two things, or last thing here, who is Pete? Pete currently has a full-time job and wakes up early to build his business. He's married with one child. His wife has her doubts about this. He makes $58,000 a year and has $25,000 in student loan debt. You see how specific I am? Now, if you want to download a your own fill-in-the-blank avatar creation guy, guide, not guy, we're not going to get a guy for you here, avatar creation guide, same guide that I use every time I create a new avatar for a product or client, go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash avatar. mattmcwilliams.com forward slash avatar. The third but, the third excuse is so, but I've got a small list. Can you still succeed at affiliate marketing with a small or no list? Yes, you can. I have seen it time and time again. Someone with less than 2,000 people makes $10,000 in an affiliate launch. There are podcast episodes out there that talk about this, not even on my show. I've done it four times myself, made over $10,000 in a single launch with a list size under 2,000. John Meese, you've heard me talk about him. 1,302 subscribers made $5,359, $5,359 in a month. 
I've seen examples where people with under 500 people make over 3,000. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're going to you know, make millions of dollars in affiliate marketing, you've got to have some sort of an email list. But it is possible with a small list or no list at all to make a living, to make really good money, to make really good money. I've seen people with zero subscribers make their first sales. In the uh, Ziegler family launch that we ran recently, we had a guy that made over 30 sales with no list whatsoever. Now, it's a long story how he did it, and it was a little complicated, but I'll share that in a future episode for sure. Now, not only is it possible to make money with a small list, it is very doable if you remember these three things. First, stop comparing yourself to others. Stop comparing yourself to others who've been doing this five times, ten times longer than you have. You know, I think every time I think of this, I think of two quotes. And the first is from John Acuff. Never compare your beginning to someone else's middle. And the second is from, actually, he goes on. Maybe I'll read this whole thing. Never compare your beginning to someone else's middle. One of the great temptations for us is to compare the start of our new adventures to the middle of someone else's. You work on your first book, and then you pick up Max Licato's 14th book, and you say, mine isn't as good. You post your first blog post, you look at Michael Hyatt's 100th and think, mine is nowhere as near as great as that. You give your first speech and you watch Ken Robinson's 1,000th at TED and think, I'm not great like that. It's true. You're not. Yet. I love that from John Acuff. And the second thing, the second quote is from Stephen Furtick, and he says, the reason we struggle with insecurity is because we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. You, you think... You think that others aren't struggling behind the scenes. Remember, you only see people's highlight reels. Whether it's on social media or their blogs, most people, they only post their finished products. You don't see the struggles. You don't see the, the, the late nights, the stress, the crap that comes out first. But trust me, it's there. It's there. So stop comparing yourself to others. Second, focus on the list you do have. Stop complaining about what you don't have and focus on what you do. If you have a small list, view it as an opportunity to really invest in that group. You can learn a lot from a small list. And then third, do your own thing. Remember, your audience follows you. They follow you. So when you have this small list, focus on cultivating your voice. Don't spend a lot of time learning new marketing tricks or uh, try not to learn too much. I mean, let's keep, you know, follow me, but spend time getting your list to love you. Don't use having a small list as an excuse not to get started and don't use it as an excuse not to succeed. Go check out uh, uh, mattmcwaves.com forward slash small list. And I've got that link to John Mises case study there. You want to check that out. Now the fourth but is, but my audience doesn't buy. It's all up here. It's mental. It's mindset. The reality is, Your audience does buy stuff. A lot of stuff, actually. They probably spend tens of thousands of dollars a year buying stuff. They just aren't buying from you or through you. Here's the key. If you learn to sell, funny thing happens. Your audience changes if you learn to sell. Isn't that crazy? Like, they start buying from you. All I did was take a copywriting class and my audience started buying. The audience didn't change. You did. And then the fifth but is but I'm afraid I'll lose subscribers. Now, kind of like the blunt side of me is like, so what? What if people unsubscribe? You know, I got a, I got a tweet recently. Let me read this here. Uh, made me scratch my head a little bit. He said, uh, I found this with my email list. When I finally got into emailing regularly, more unsubs. What did you expect? I mean, the more you email, the more unsubscribers you will have. It's, it's simple math. The more you promote, the more unsubscribers you have. The more you email about blog posts, the more unsubscribers you have. The more you email about free guides, free reports, podcast episodes, the more you ask people to ask questions, the more unsubscribers you have. The more email equals more unsubscribers always. It's a proven formula. But here's the thing. So what? So what? I want you to get this deep down. Subscriber counts mean nothing in and of themselves. They mean nothing. I have seen people with lists one-tenth the size of others destroy them in affiliate contests. I've beat people with lists, I've talked about this earlier, five to 25 times bigger than mine. I I beat them. Ray Edwards does it all the time. Ray Edwards does it all the time. Lists 10 times, 20 times bigger than his, he's destroying them. If someone 
unsubscribes because you make a relevant and helpful offer, why do you want them on your list in the first place? Remember, you are running a business. Businesses make money. Businesses sell stuff. Yes, I want you to create value. Yes, give a lot of value away for free. Yes, ask them to buy something from time to time. But if someone never buys anything, they, they have no business value. One of my favorite t-shirts, should have worn it right now, is from Noah Kagan. It says, likes don't pay bills, sales do. Likes don't pay bills, sales do. Don't fear unsubscribes. If you are offering relevant, helpful, valuable offers and someone unsubscribes, let them leave. Bye-bye. Let them leave. So those are the five most common excuses for not doing affiliate marketing or giving up on it. All of them are up here and they're all mental barriers. And once you overcome those mental barriers, you're going to be on your way to affiliate success. You already know how to sell. Start acting like it. You know how to create your avatar now. Do it. A small list is no reason not to get started. Your audience does buy stuff. And once you know how to sell, they will buy from you. And unsubscribes, who cares? I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguide.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguide.com. Who knows, might end up being featured on this podcast.